You know, Terry, this is almost monumental. I mean, when I think about it, I've lived here a little bit over 35 years. Uh, I've known Tim Craig here for almost all that. I and a few, a few other gentlemen ran for a uh, board election this year. Uh, and we, we formed a group, not just a group of the people that were running, but we formed like an advisory group, which Joe was part of, uh, Dennis Verhagen was part of, uh, uh, Dr. Patel was part of, and it was to try to bring together the issues that we wanted to deal with at, in the event that we were successful. We wanted to not just have problems, but solutions. I was chairman of the finance committee for the association in 2005, 6, and 7. At that time, we had anywhere from 10 to 15 members on the board were very transparent. Our meetings were open to the public. There was nothing to hide. What I have found since that period of time is, I think, a lack of transparency. The reason we're having kind of an urgent meeting is because of the things that we had noticed in our campaigning efforts and our ideas about what things could get better, there's been kind of a perfect storm that's come together of some elements that have put us into a pretty kind of scary situation much more so than just a urgent situation. Uh, we have a, a budget issue, we have finance issues in general, we have uh, uh, reserves which have never been great, never been awful, and they're heading towards awful very quickly. And uh, one of the reasons that that's happening is from something that I think most people are not aware of is an infrastructure problem with the lake. Everybody's familiar with the quality of the lake water or the health of the lake. We've been working on that for quite some time. Uh, and I think it's pretty much a known item. People know where we're at. Very few people know uh, the degree that the infrastructure is crumbling around Spring Valley Lake. Um, it's uh, something that they've been wor working on, the association in the background, but kind of quietly, but never really getting their hands around the degree of the problem. So, uh, but to talk about the first issue, we just recently passed a budget. Uh, this budget was not disclosed to the association before the day of the vote. Even on the day of the vote, it was not disclosed. We asked for copies of the budget that was being voted upon, and they were not available to us. All that was available were as a projection of part of the budget, difficult to read, so no one really had a, a, a total idea. And you were allowed to make comments, but because of, it was a regular board meeting, the board had no obligation, nor did they respond to any questions that were asked. Uh, so we got up and we said our question, and then there'd be dead silence, and you'd walk back to your chair. And not only weren't the questions answered, they don't even appear in the minutes of the meeting. So there's no record that we even asked those questions. And mind you, the minutes can be read forever, but there's probably only 35 or 40 people in the room, so those are the only ones that heard the questions. Um, they were important questions. None of them were frivolous or ill-considered, and uh, but they went nowhere. Uh, from that point on, there was discussion within the board about the vote. Uh, they increased the budget by quite a bit from where they had started that morning and voted upon it, and they ended up voting the maximum increase in the budget uh, that, that's allowed. And that, that's a $1.2 million increase over last year's assessment, but it's actually a $2.2 million increase over last year's expenses. That may not sound consistent, and, and the reason is, last year we overassessed the community by uh, o almost a million dollars. It's the largest overassessment we've had in a long time. They assessed way higher than we needed, by by, by end up being about nine hundred sixty thousand dollars. And usually, or what typically happens in the homeowners association when that happens, is that money is either refunded to the people that paid it pro rata, or it's applied to the coming year's budget. So it's the same as a refund because, you know, you're all getting sharing that, that uh, money going into the till. This board, three years ago, decided that any excess funds would not be refunded or um, go towards an extra budget, but they would be allowed to redirect it as they saw fit. Now, when I say redirect as they saw fit, it is for association activities. It's not nobody's saying that they're redirecting it in. It's something that they're putting in their pocket. But what is happening is they're redirect, re redirecting on activities that were never part of the budget, and they go into a fund. They, they go into our bank account. There's no accounting for the fund, and at some point in time, they usually say, "Oh, we decided we're going to spend it here, here, or here." Unfortunately, the places they say they're going to spend the excess fund are places that are already funded by the regular accounting and reserve system. So that money really doesn't fund those things. They're funded separately. That money kind of goes into a, a fund of extra cash 
that just grows on its own. So I had mentioned this to the board several times. This time I brought documentation to this meeting, said I thought it was illegal for them to not be returning the excess to the association. If they wanted to redirect it, they, they, they could do so. They had to get at least a voice vote uh, by the membership to approve that. I mentioned that, handed them the paperwork. They said, thank you very much. Uh, and then later on, when the budget was finalized, I was told they are still redirecting it as they see fit. The, the second issue, and, and, and believe it or not, this is more complicated in that most people have dealt with financials and budgets. Most people have not dealt with a reserve process, which is unique to homeowners associations. And basically, a reserve process is just a formal way to force an association to put put aside funds for the big ticket items that are going to need to be replaced over the years. So if you know that you're going to have to replace a basketball court every 20 years and the cost will be $200,000, every year you put aside $10,000. So when that comes about, you've got the money. By the way, you also invest it, make a little bit more money than that. Than that. Uh, that's the whole idea of the reserve program. And our reserve program is very misunderstood because it's complicated, but basically there's a number called fully funded. And what that is, is a, it's a calculation of how much money should be in our reserve fund at that moment. If we had set aside all the right money and all the right increments, this is how much money should be there, here's how much is actually there, and the percent between the two is our fully funded number. We've, we've been at about 50 percent, give or take a few percent, for the last 10 years. Uh, which is low, in my opinion, uh, you want because it's it unfairly penalizes the people that are coming up. It means you haven't charged enough to the past. You're going to be having to charge more to the future. Uh, but 50% is what it's been. This year, it dropped under 30 for the first time to 28.6%. And that's a pretty remarkable drop, and that puts us into more of a risk category for a lot of things, for lenders or for other people, other vendors that we deal with, we're now considered at risk because we look like we're low on the funds it takes to maintain the association. What's even worse than the percentage that we're at this year is that the projection next year we're going to be at 6.4 percent and the year after that we're going to be at 0 0.6 percent. Now remember, never been under 50, usually have anywhere between one and a half to two and a half to three million in our reserve account at any given time in the last 10 years, uh, that's dropping to 1.7 million this year. Next year, it will be approximately, I don't know, 250,000. And then the year after that, 15,000. Uh, and, and it only stays uh, positive because the amount of money that we're having to put into the reserves is going up dramatically. It usually goes up 5% a year. It's going to go up 40% each year for the next two years just to keep us from going negative. And I would say the average association member does not know that, does not understand that, and does not realize how interlinked that is to some other decisions that have been made uh, that have caused that to happen. Not the least of which is the uh, infrastructure issue with the lake, which, which has two aspects of it. One is a disclosure aspect, uh, meaning that people that have moved here, really in the last 20 years, should have known about it. It should have been something in the disclosure document, and they haven't. On top of that, the, the, the association has been aware of it since 1997. There was a court order that they were responsible for the infrastructure and the timetable and whatever program to put together. And as of this date, there is no program uh, put together other than a Band-Aid stopgap approach. Um, I'll give you an analogy. It's like finding out you've got cancer. And rather than going to the doctor and finding out what stage you're at, we immediately started treatment, even though we don't know whether we're stage one, two, three, or four. And that's what's been happening for years and years and years. We forced the association to get that assessment. They hired, at their choosing, they hired a, a professional uh, organization to uh, assess the condition of the lake, paid a lot of money to this group. They came back with some horrific numbers uh, that uh, said that the short-term costs could be between eight and 30 million and long-term costs could be over $100 million. The association got this and they immediately said, well, this can't be right. Now, if I went to a doctor and he said, you got stage four? And I said, I feel too good. I can't have stage four. This can't be right. What do you do? You get a second opinion. 
you know, just stick your head in the sand. We decided to stick our head in the sand for three more years and wait and see how things come out the next time we lower the lake. Even though the problems we have not only are bad, they are deteriorating at a worse and worse rate where the amount of money it's going to take to repair it goes further and further up, causing more and more damage because of the delay. Any concluding? Well, there are two things. First, the, these are numbers that we didn't glean out of thin air. These are all based on association documents that when we're presenting this on, on Saturday morning, on, on November 4th, you'll see all the, all, all the information, all uh, gleaned from the association documents. The other thing is it was important to me that we share all of this with the board and not look, not make this uh, a gotcha for them where they haven't seen any of it. Because when we discussed doing this, I said, I don't want to just be planning our re-election campaign a year down the road. I want, I want things to change now. So let's give the board the benefit of the doubt and see if we can bring them along and be our more, most convincing selves. And we have had some moderate uh, gains on some peripheral issues. The bigger the issue, the more entrenched it seems. There, the, it's, it's kind of baked into other things and we haven't been able to penetrate. But I have put everything in front of the board that I'm presenting to you. They've seen it. No one's disagreed with the content or the interpretation. They just feel that uh, the approach they're taking is sufficient, and it it surely is not. Terry, what 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 I think Tim is saying, and I and I've seen this, I've seen this. Believe it or not, you know we helped form Spring Valley Concerned Property Owners, and for 11 years we had a great working relationship. And all of a sudden, when I started asking questions, uh, the board, the the general manager, decided to make it a personal issue. And they wouldn't respond, but then I would get these letters from, from Mr. Tinley. And, 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 and Steve, I hope you watch this because you know what we'll do this next time around. I will tell the board, and this is this now, this new chapter in Spring Valley Lake is not personal. Okay, it's factual. Okay, I think the American public is tired of not hearing from their elected officials in Washington, from the state, whether it be the county or the city that they live in. So I think this is going to be an exercise where Tim has peeled back this onion, and I mean countless hours. And, you know, he, he puts the information together, he goes to the board, and, and they just say, poo-poo, we don't have to do that. Well, they're not going to do that anymore, okay? Because the power of social media and the power of the video, I mean, you know, Tim's looking at this thing, Ricky Zimmerman's looking at this thing, Dennis Verhagen, I'm looking at it. We have to do what's right for the association, now, not what's right for Tim or Joe.